afternoon, Curtis Brawley. Afternoon, how are you? I'm doing good. Are you enjoying the weather? It's amazing. I, you know, I live in Texas for the most part, and it's always hot and sunny, even in the uh, midst of the winter down there, so it's pretty cool yeah. to be here and watch the snowfall. Yeah, because this morning I was like, I don't remember moving to Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why is this year again? I know, didn't the groundhog just see his shadow? Spring is supposed to be Yes, like that lying little animal. <laughs> um, <laughs> you are here to, um, this week, talking about Sooner or Later. Yes. Your new song. Uh, talk about that song, recording it uh, with Kimberly. Yeah, Kimberly Caldwell and I, uh, we go way back. We were kids, grew up in the same town, and... You know, as kids, we used to travel around and sing at all the jamborees, kind of getting our feet wet with yeah. working with live bands and kind of honing our craft, if you will. And uh, we both grew up and went our separate ways. And she did American Idol back in season three, I believe it was. And the label came to me with this song that I absolutely fell in love with, but it was a duet. So they said, well, we can do it, but we have to figure out who you're going to sing it with. So I said, well, I know this girl. She's She does more pop rock genre now, but it kind of be a cool mashup. So mm -hmm. we got together and did it and it, was, it turned out really well. All right. And how does it still feel when you release a work? Because the, the main topic of conversation for my interview this week is the concept of creative courage. If you're putting yourself out there, something that's of yourself, mm -hmm. that's a courageous thing to do because it makes you vulnerable. Yeah. So when you're, you record a song, you're ready to put it out there, um, it's it was, you know, it's a personal song to you now because you spent so much time with it. How does it feel when you release it out there into the world? Um, it's a little nerve-wracking. Let me say this. We are currently writing for a new project that I'm going to be doing uh, that's going to release this summer. And it's a very, I came up with this idea of having, I wanted to tell a story from beginning to end through the entire album. So the, the very first song is the beginning of the story. Yeah. And the last song would be the end of the story, and kind of everything in between is how, you know, kind of tells the story of how my life has taken place right. uh, at growing up. And I was sitting down with one of the writers recently, and I had a concept for this song, and we were trying to come up with stuff, come up with stuff, and he finally he said, look, let's just stop and let's get really real and talk about really personal, real things that have happened to you in your life, because that's what we need yeah. to do to come up with this song. And that's a very vulnerable place to put yourself. You're almost reliving experiences yeah. that you don't necessarily want to relive. and But you come up with great material then that a lot of people can relate to. And then later when that song gets pushed out to the public, that's going to be another vulnerable experience because people know you're telling a true story about something. And, yeah. and, uh, and nerve-wracking because you hope people enjoy something that you put a lot of effort into. And the that idea of, because it sounds like almost a conscious decision of I'm going to write for the new project, and I'm going to do that showing up and really being seen for who I am. Yes. Was that a conscious decision, or is it just kind of naturally more? No, it was a conscious decision. It was, uh, I mean, from two aspects. It's you want to tell a story about yourself that I think, you know, when especially the fans, when they feel like they can really connect with you and relate to who you are, yeah. uh, they enjoy that experience as well as I do. And I, it's something that you don't hear being done a lot. You know, I want it to, you know, usually a, a project will have a concept for the music, but it doesn't necessarily yeah. tell a story from beginning to end. And uh, there's just something I've been thinking about a long time that I wanted to do that you don't see very often. Now I've got the whole concept album thing. It was sort of, it, it hasn't been done for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not struggling to come up. Tommy, maybe. Uh, but outside of that, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah, not it's not many. it's not heard of too often. How do you handle that? Um, the relationship between those things of being creative means being vulnerable means being courageous. Like how how does that show up in your life? Well, there was a time I was probably I would be too scared to do that. I wouldn't want to necessarily you know throw yourself out there to the wolves. But uh, I don't know. I'm at a point in my life where I'm happy with who I am. I'm confident about who I am and what I've done in my life and um, you know it's I'm eager to share it with the world I guess. So it came out of, that's interesting, because um, it came up in another conversation this morning like that idea of self-acceptance. Yeah. Like, I'm okay with who I am. If you're not that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Because I am. <laughs> yeah. And there was a time in my life where I wouldn't have been like that you know where 
you're constantly maybe bending your actions or your ways to make sure that you keep everyone try to keep everyone happy you know because right. they may not necessarily agree with your point of view or you know what yeah. you're doing um, but I don't know, I've just got to a point in my life where life's too short to always worry about what everybody else thinks and yeah. you just have to really be self accepting and once you do that I think the doors open wide for people when they really become happy with themselves definitely however the other side of that is you still need to have the constructive criticism. So you can't filter out all feedback. No, absolutely not. But you can't all let it in because yep. you would go crazy listening to every opinion. Um, so how do you filter who falls where? Well, I have a whole team of people who gives me constructive criticism all right. the time or their opinions on how things should be handled or done. And you know, I always jokingly say I pay I pay good money for those people to uh, <laughs> criticize what I do. Yeah. But I value all their opinions. There's people who are have been in the industry for a long time and they've been around the block a time or two on this thing. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think an artist has to, uh, well, anyone making a decision in their life, they have to go with their gut. Yeah. Uh, that's just something I think people have to learn as they grow older that you you go with your gut instinct and that usually is what pays off. It may be the wrong decision in the end, but at least you know you did what you thought was right. Yep. And that leads into the next idea. Um, and I'm looking for a specific example. So not like names, but situations of where maybe you weren't as patient as you should have been or where you made a decision and then, you know, six months down the line, you're like, oh, that was really not quite the right thing as it turned out. Um, what, was, what was the thing that put you in making the wrong quote-unquote decision? Is that impatience? Is that inexperience? Is that anxiousness? Um, if you do end up somewhere looking back going, that wasn't quite right, what's usually the thing that got you there? Um, anxious is probably would be at the top of the list and then maybe an experience under that. Yeah. I think um, you know somebody who grows up dreaming of being in the music industry where we're always the artists are always you know in a creative mind frame they want to get their art out there to the world and they they try and hurry and get it done and so I think that sometimes can hinder you and then just inexperience you know you kind of have to learn learn your way through as you go you can't learn all the knowledge up front you know you have to bump your bump your toe along the way but with that being said I don't really feel like any decision I've ever made has necessarily been the wrong decision because at some point that decision has yeah. taken me to a place where now something great is happening and maybe right. not making that decision would have never brought me to that place. Oh yeah, and it, there's one of my favorite lines when I, when I work with somebody, one of my, because everything relates to songs with me as I'm sure it does with you. Yeah. <laughs> so one of my favorite lines in a song is um, from Jason Mraz's song, I'm Yours, mm -hmm. where he says, I reckon it's again my turn to win some or learn some. Yeah. It's not win or lose, it's right. win or learn. Win or learn, and absolutely. That, that's, that, that sounds like what you're talking about. Exactly, that, yeah, that's a powerful statement. wrong, quote unquote, you, well, here's what I learned from it, right. so it's not wasted time. Yep, it teaches you how to deal with the same scenario if it comes along later, and yep. it just takes you to a new place in your life that um, you can build on and move on with. Yep, and that mechanism of moving on, so you're, you did something, you made a decision, you realize, oh, that wasn't quite right, here's what I learned from it, now I can move through this feeling and go do better next time. That process of do you, what process do you need to go through? Do you kind of need to beat yourself up for a day and then get through that? Do you need to feel bad about it for longer and then get through <laughs> that? Or is it just, is it fairly quickly and painless <laughs> to move through? And, no, I would definitely say it's not painless. But I think that <laughs> I'll definitely beat my, still beat myself up when I do anything that, I look back on and think, man, I wish I would have done it differently, or I wish I would have done it better. Yeah. Um, even watching like playback of a live show, I mean, I'll criticize it to death. Yeah. And um, but then at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, I'm probably the only one that's really making a big deal about of it, a big deal out of it. Um, I don't know. As time goes, I think I make, I still make a big deal out of it and beat myself up. But the amount of time gets shorter each time yeah, because exactly. I realize, ah, okay, it's probably not as big of a deal as as I'm making it to be. And that is the work. 
right there, what you just <laughs> described. Because um, it's, I don't care what your career is, like the, you know, the people out there in their offices right now, they all have that same thing. It gets, I made a decision, oh, it's not quite right. Um, I think that, that work of working on not judging yourself for it, not you know, being too down on yourself, but picking yourself back up, learning and recovering and mm -hmm. getting through and doing better next time. I think that's the work of being a human being. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just, it's not well, and the best way to learn is to make a bad decision. Yeah, it's just that for you guys, you tend to do it in the public eye. <laughs> right. <laughs> People who are in law offices, you know, they get to hide in their office, but it's if you're doing a creative endeavor and you're out in public, then you have to go through this often publicly. Yeah. Um, which for me, like, oh, no. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> which is why you guys do you and I do. <laughs> right. Um, I always end with it something much lighter. Just, you know, because uh, this was serious discussion. If you had to put together an album that's kind of the soundtrack of your life with songs that were with you as you were growing up and growing as your own artist, what songs make that record? Oh, man. Um, that's a really good question that I've never thought about before. I know, because there's so many. There's so many good songs out there <laughs> that... Because people have turned it around on me, and they're like, well, what is that like, after the interview? And I go, well, wait, by the way, what's on your album? Well, no, 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 I ask the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I ask you to the answer. Yeah. It is tough. That is a tough question. Because I could totally just throw... I mean, I can think of songs. I could throw a song out there, and then later, looking back on this interview, I'm like, that's totally not would have been the song that I would have picked. When it's... Because, I mean, you know, for me, it's not every... You know, people who are growing up in Texas, well, you have the president of Texas, Willie Nelson. Um, so I would like to expect that maybe there's a George Strait song there. Like, there's so many people that are just, you know, are from where you're from. Right. Um, but that's not necessarily, you know, the stuff that you were listening to. Yeah. Um, when you were figuring out, like, hey, that's what I want to do for a living. Um, there's a song that Kenny Rogers did called She Believes in Me, which was always a moving song for me because it really talked about, for me, it talked about life in general, regardless of what happens daily in your life, the ups yeah. and the downs, the turns that come along with it. At the end of the day, having a support system or someone by your side that really believes in you and what you're doing makes it all come together. Yeah, that is a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a little while to figure it out, but... <laughs>